Good evening, welcome to Evening Focus. I'm Ben Johnston, your music director here at First Lutheran, your host tonight, filling in for Pastor Michael Miller. You know, as music director, I'm often asked a wide array of crazy, zany questions about music and worship. More particular to Lutheran worship, though, I'm often asked why your hymnal starts at number 151. That is because the first 150 songs in our Lutheran hymnal, in fact, in the LBW hymnal, and every Lutheran hymnal, are the Psalms. 1 through 150, the original songbook. Many of these wonderful songs have already been immortalized in contemporary classics. For example, Psalm 91. Fortress, Psalm 46. Truly, there is a song for everything. A psalm for every season, including this one. A psalm for good, a psalm for the dark days. In these days, when new life is springing forth from the ground, new and powerful relationships are also springing forth in and around our community. People moved by love, helping others. We heard from several examples of this from organizations local and across our state last week. Signs of new life, a fresh start, a new way forward from here. Tonight I'd like to share a few words on community from Father Richard Rohr and the wisdom teachers at the Center for Action and Contemplation. You can find this article and others like it by going to cac.org. That was a little, a little low. On community, Father Rohr writes, A divine foundation of relationship is what all religion, spirituality, and perhaps even politics is aiming for. The Trinity offers us this precise gift, a grounded connection with God, self, others, the whole world. This ancient doctrine dared to affirm that God is, is relationship itself. The way of Jesus, therefore, is an invitation to a way of living, loving, and relating on earth as it is in God. We are intrinsically like the Trinity, living in absolute relatedness. While we may not always recognize it, we are all together in a web of mutual interdependence. When we recognize it on a spiritual level, we call it love. 12th century mystic Richard of St. Victor wrote about the Trinity as a mutual, loving companionship of friends, a community, if you will. In Richard Rohr's book, The D Divine Dance, he summarizes some of this thinking, saying that for God to be good, God can be one. For God to be loving, God has to be two, because love is always a relationship. But for God to share excellent joy and delight, God has to be three, because supreme happiness is when two persons share their common delight in a third something together. All we need to do is witness a couple after the birth of their new baby, and you can see this for yourself. Mm -hmm. Two people excited about the same thing are the beginning of almost everything new, fresh, creative, risky in our world. Surely this is what Jesus meant by his first and most basic definition of church as two or three gathered. A community inspired by the Trinity will be a community of people who treat each other as subjects and not objects. This Sunday, remember, we heard Pastor Jim. He shared an example using the words from Psalm 23. When things are going well, God is just an object to this psalmist, something he talks about, something abstract. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. You know, mm -hmm. God exists somewhere out there, distant, removed from us. But when life closes in, when it brings trouble and uncertainty, 
when fears crowd around, note how the psalmist begins to talk. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Note how the relationship shifts from an impersonal I and it to a more personal I, thou, you and me. People of First Lutheran and beyond, from God's perspective, you are always known and always loved. God and the human person must know one another, center to center, subject to subject, never subject to object. This is why there is no seeking power over in the Trinity, but only power with a giving away, a sharing, a letting go, and thus an infinity of trust and mutuality. This has the power to change everything. Relationships, marriages, culture, international dialogue, everything. If we believe in a Trinitarian God, then we must hold fast to the truth that God is community, a completely loving, mutually self-giving, endlessly generative relationship between equal partners. We are included in that community, and so is everyone else. Amen. Amen. With that, I'd like for us to turn out to some prayers over our community for everybody. Dan, do you think we could get some uh, prayer music? Oh, sure. For those of you that don't know, you can stop by and drop off your prayers anytime during the week, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The box is waiting right outside the front in the covered awning. Today we'd like to offer up our prayers together as a community. In this time of COVID-19, Lord, we pray when we aren't sure, God, help us be calm. When information comes from all sides, correct and not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. We pray tonight for Helen Baumgartner and the family and loved ones as she passes from this life to the next. We pray tonight for Sister Becky, excuse me, here at First Lutheran. She's recovering at Mercy Hospital from a broken shoulder and leg. For the doctors and the nurses, we pray. the technicians and the engineers, for all the many cogs of the essential trappings of our government and our society, for those workers and first responders, Lord, we pray. For the sick and for the grieving, we pray. For all those who are affected, we pray, Lord. For the least among us, for the refugee, for the prisoner, for the homeless, for those caught in between, Lord, we pray. For all those around the world, Lord, we pray for safety, for health, for wholeness. May we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty. May we walk with those who feel they are alone. And may we do all that we can to heal the sick in spite of the epidemic in spite of the fear. Help us, O oh God, that we might help each other. In the love of the Creator, in the name of the Healer, in the life of the Holy Spirit that is in all and with all, we pray. Amen.
So for tonight's program, we have some special guests, actually a couple with a new baby uh, that have so much joy to share. But unfortunately, they can't share it at 7 o'clock because that's a little late for some members of their household. You may know Sarah Lee from the First Lutheran Symphony, where she plays the bassoon, or as a member here, uh, a visitor here at uh, First Lutheran, along with uh, her family. So we're going to get to know them a little bit tonight. everybody my name is Sarah my name is Tom um, and we're Tom and Sarah Lee and we are recording our video ahead of time because of this little uh, milk monster as we call her <laughs> um, her name is Winter we call her Winnie um, and unfortunately when you guys record or do the uh, video for the evening uh, the evening time she is somewhere in the process of going to bed or crying or eating or bathing or something like that. Uh, so we decided to record ahead of time. We also have one other friend here who is an important part of the family. <laughs> She's our, our really grumpy um, puppy named, well her name is London, we call her Lundy. She, when we rescued her she was 11 and we had to pull out all of her teeth except for three. Uh, so we decided London was oh, too fancy a name for her and she now is lovingly called <laughs> her life is really hard if you can't tell from that big fat yaw. Uh, she also is, a lot of people have been hashtagging quarantine here which Maybe all of us are rocking here, <laughs> including Lundy. I think Tom's going to have to take a number four to Lundy pretty soon, so that maybe we'll have to do an update of her buzz cut. Um, but anyways, we have been with the church. Oh, we hopefully are in a limited time here. I've uh, been at the church for about a year, year and a half. Um, oh, no. You're okay, sweetie. Um, and I really love the community. I'm thinking maybe... We could talk about our favorite things in Janesville. Um, we really love, uh, probably first and foremost, the community. Um, I had a really difficult pregnancy and was so grateful for the way everyone came around to me. <laughs> um, and uh, really supported both of us through that time and our smells and everything. And I love being a part of the church, of course. Um, we also love the Ice Age Trail. We both like to run. Um, and have really enjoyed exploring parts of change and well through that. Um, the last thing I thought we could talk about is uh, how I know other people have talked a little bit about um, how they're showing God's love during this really weird, weird and hard time. Um, so actually, uh, we're here because Tom works at the hospital. You want to say what you do? Uh, so I'm an orthopedic surgeon uh, specializing in trauma and joint replacements. Yeah, which is why we're in Janesville, and um, we feel like, you know, because now she's sitting my finger. <laughs> uh, I told you she's a milk monster. Oh, Lundy can go. That's her. Oh, I like <laughs> <laughs> um, She's a milk monster. She's trying to eat everything. Um, I promise we're feeding her all the time. <laughs> um, anyway, so unfortunately, we don't feel like uh, we can get out often um, or hardly at all uh, because Tom does work at the hospital and um, I think it's really possible he has been or will be exposed to the coronavirus at some point um, and so I think one of the best ways we can show God's love is uh, beyond you know obviously donating money and making sure people in our community have enough to eat um, is to stay inside and stay away from other people uh, which has been very hard of course um, but we're trying to enjoy the time here with Winnie and our family at home. Um, the next thing I thought might be kind of fun is uh, so Tom's a, a doctor at the hospital uh, and as part, many of you probably know I play bassoon and so I actually already recorded something um, that I thought might be fun to hear of me playing bassoon. Um, it is something we recorded earlier because we had to do it when our friend would eat nothing. <laughs> so anyways, uh, thanks so much, guys, and we hope to see all of you again so very soon. We miss everyone so much. Bye. Bye. All right, offer some bassoon. Hi, everybody. Okay, so next I thought it might be fun to play a little bit. I hope the music brings you joy. 
joy this evening. Um, I'm going to play two separate things. The first thing is, I'll hope a little bit fun. Um, it's actually a uh, bassoon solo from a symphony, but it's featured in a Disney movie. Um, so I thought maybe some of the listeners might recognize it. Um, it is an older Disney movie, so the younger kids may not know it unless they've seen the movie. Um, but I'm going to play it and see if you recognize uh, what movie it's from. Anybody know what that is? Mike, Dan, you guys know what Disney movie she's talking about? Fantasia? Yeah, very good. So for all of you listeners out there, if you guessed Fantasia, you would be correct. Let's continue. Uh, so that's it. That's the part of it. Um, it is actually in the movie Fantasia. The old one, not the newer one. That was from like 2000. This is an older one. Um, and it takes place when Mickey Mouse is dancing with the buckets and the brooms and everything's going crazy. Moths and everything's going crazy. Um, and the symphony that it's taken from is called The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which makes sense for the movie. Um, it is written by a French guy named Dubois. Um, but super bassoony. Uh, a lot of people know that um, from the bassoon repertoire. Um, but I did want to play one more thing. This is... Uh, I thought it'd be fun to play something lyrical, um, pretty and lyrical. Uh, it's a side of the scene not as many people know, although all of you guys at church probably do a little bit more because I get to play uh, from time to time. Um, but anyways, so this is an etude, which is uh, what people use just for like, practice time. Um, it was written by a guy named Milde, a uh, German composer, but he actually um, wrote it uh, for the students to practice, but they, uh, the students ended up enjoying them so much that we have to perform them um, because they're really beautiful and really lyrical. Um, so this is his third A2 concert piece, um, and it is in the key B flat, and I hope you enjoy it. Sarah, Tom, Winnie, and Lundy, thank you so much for sharing a little bit with us here tonight. And uh, that little bit of bassoon will have to tide us over, I guess, until we can meet again as the First Lutheran Orchestra and see each other here in worship. So, now that we've heard a little bit of bassoon, why don't we continue with a little bit of music with Dan? Yes, let's do that. Um, first, though, we're talking about community tonight and, and loving our neighbors and loving all those in our community and making sure everybody's fed. Next week, Thursday, Second Harvest, here in our parking lot, if you're able to come and volunteer, it's a little different now during the pandemic, so people just come up, they don't get out of their cars, pop the trunk, there's food already boxed up, loaded up in their trunk and, and away they go. So we need people to help direct traffic, hold signs up to give them directions, load up the, the vehicles with food, and, and help, our, help our neighbors. And if anybody needs that help, don't feel bashful. Come and, come and, and uh, get some food if there's plenty for everybody. So, um, And then I do have 
a little um, devotion tonight. So, so when we found out that uh, Pastor Michael was going to be with us tonight, Ben had asked me if I could um, do a little devotion and a song for tonight. And I promise we did not get together and plan this, but my devotion is from um, Pastor Richard Rohr, <laughs> from <laughs> Center of Action and Contemplation. So we uh, both, I guess, are big uh, um, Father Rohr fans. Um, so Father Rohr talking about um, his de um, devotion and meditation talked about it, a favorite song of mine, um, and it's based off of a, a very old prayer. Um, Father Rohr says, in today's religious, environmental, and political climate, our compassionate engagement is urgent and vital. And he's urging us to love those in our community who maybe don't think um, like us or have the same values as us, but that everybody is created in God's image and that image is love. So the prayer um, is from St. Richard, Bishop of Chichester, who lived between 1197 and 1253. And his prayer was to know God more clearly. And that prayer goes, O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. So that song was, or that prayer was turned into a song um, called Day by Day. And it's one of my favorites because it's more of a prayerful song. And um, Father Rohr says, uh, ways of knowing God are inseparable from human existence. God comes to us disguised as our lives. Christians emphasize tradition and or scripture as sources of truth but we balance them with our own experiences. There are many, as many ways of knowing God as there are people who have lived. Jesus told us that loving God and our neighbor are the first commandments. How we know and what we know are shaped by our experiences. Jesus continually invites us to see differently by encountering and engaging with those around us and those who are different than us. God calls us not to conform to the pattern of the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds through relationship with those who see life from a different perspective than we do. As we journey together, be patient with others and yourself. Simply notice and observe reactions rather than resist or judge them. Expanding our perspective moves us out of our comfort zones, so this may be an important time to practice some contemplative prayer and meditation, such as what my, Pastor Michael has been teaching us over the past couple of weeks. And I do have a prayer for our community that I would like to share, so please pray with me. O oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and weight of glory. Listen to our hearts, longings for healing of our world. Knowing you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, please join us in singing our prayerful song, Day by Day. Mm -hmm.
joining with us tonight. And you know, evening focus just wouldn't be the same if we didn't end it with Pastor Michael. So I turn it over to Pastor Michael. Hey there, Pastor Michael. You're joining us here. Can you hear me? Hello, Ben. I can hear you. Wonderful. Well, the whole it's, good game, to be, yeah, it's good, good to be able to join you from this distance. Yeah, yeah, the whole gang's here. I've got, uh, well, let's see, I've got myself, and I have Dan and Michael. So Hi, we're Pastor all Michael. Here. Hello. Hello. Good to hear you. Yeah, so I've been, uh, I've been hearing you talk about community tonight. Yeah, we've been sharing a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the words from Father Richard about about how God comes to us through our lives. Uh, something that I've been experiencing in a in a unique way uh, as we gather around my mother-in-law Helen Baumgartner. Um, it's a precious part of the journey to walk with her and to remember and to share uh, what this what these relationships have meant, what the community of this family has been for her and for us, and um, I'm made aware of just what a mystery our lives are, and the mystery that God is present in the midst and through those, uh, through those lives is, is a powerful thing. Um, and, be, and I think the other thing that I've been thinking about in these last couple days is just how many people are walking that journey right now because of the COVID virus and the other things that happen in, in life. Um, there are a lot of people who are grieving right now, uh, which is an expression of the love that we have for this life and for our relationships and for our community. And so as we come to the end of this evening's broadcast, thinking about how precious community is and how precious it is that we share that life of community in the, in the presence of God. Uh, we come to that, that concluding chant. Um, and, I, and I think about uh, Jerry May, who, who wrote that chant originally. Uh, and as, as he was traveling this end-of-life journey, his repeated phrase I, I understand to those who were gathered with him was trust love. He just kept saying trust love. And so um, as we trust the love that, that gives us life and that draws us together into relationship, um, may that love root itself more deeply in us and may we root ourselves more deeply in that love as we chant. Changeless and calm, deep mystery, and the more deeply rooted in me. Changeless and calm, deep mystery, And 
I want to encourage all of you to trust in that love, and I thank you for your love and your continued prayers for, for me and for my family. Um, and we, we continue the journey together, joined, joined in that prayer and in that come up. Have a good night now. Good night, Pastor. Thank good you. Good night. Good to be with you.